Hey out there, this is Thursday, December 24th, 2020. It's the day before Christmas, 2020. And, uh, you know, I don't know why we celebrate Christ's birthday uh, this in this month, because um, from all the people I trust say that uh, it's closer to September. So just a little, um, you know, for your information there. Uh, it's about uh, oh, about 7.44 in the morning here in Northern California. And as usual, I'll get into a few different things. You know, I really would not bother with this video series I've been putting out if I really did not feel it was very important information that I had to share with people. I do my best to try to help people sort things out in their mind and to help them understand how humanity got to this point in the 21st century. And I'm no smarter than anybody else. I'm probably less learned than a lot of people out there, although I've had a lot of schooling and higher education, whatnot, but um, I can learn pretty much what I want to learn. But the main difference between myself and a lot of people is a lot of people, they really don't pay attention. And for a lot of people, it's like going too close to a flame when it comes to information. It gets too complex, too complicated, and it hurts their head figuratively speaking. And so what happens is everybody's heard the term ignorance is bliss. So we prescribe to that. A lot of people do. And I have not. I have said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I've been wondering since I was a little kid why there was these horrible things going on in this world. I mean, we all at, a, at an age, a tender young age, we feel that sense of bliss, of well-being, of, wow, this is really cool. I, I, I was born, I, I'm, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, I'm, I, I'm, I've got these parents, I've got, you know, these, they're nice to me, um, they take care of me. Uh, I mean, you know certain things from a very young age that are beautiful. I mean, you know, you, 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 you enjoy seeing, you go into a pet shop when you're a little kid. Remember that? I mean, all the things, all the wonders, it was like, wow, it's so magical and cool. And, you know, when things are right, but also at an early age, we realize there's something very screwed up, right? Very young. I mean, we're talking young. We're talking four and five. For me, it was right in that range, okay? I remember walking home from kindergarten. I was living in Manhattan Beach at the... Uh, little uh, coastal town in Southern California, kind of at the south end of Hermosa and Redondo Beach down there. And, um, uh, and uh, in 1963, that was, when uh, JFK was assassinated. I remember I was walking home from kindergarten. <laughs> when people started coming out of their homes. And uh, there was crying and the weeping and wailing, and it was, it was horrific. Horrific. Five years old. Five and a half, maybe, approximately. And uh, and it was depressing. It, it, it was such a downer, you know. It's like, what in the hell is it? What, how could this, this is so horrific to think that this beloved president, because I knew that. I mean, I, you know, I watched the news with my parents. I mean, black and white TV and well, I mean, you know, for the most part, news was not taboo. My my sisters were a little older. My oldest sister's three years older, so she was, um, I guess she was eight and a half approximately, and, um, and about a year and a half difference from my middle sister. So uh, she was, um, you know, about seven years old, I guess, and... Um, So anyhow, it was uh, it was um, a real bummer, you know, even at that young age. And uh, my dad had always had some issues. They never showed up, I don't remember, until I was probably about six, seven years old when I first started noticing he was seemed to have some real anger issues. 
And he wrote a book when I was about uh, seven, eight, in that range, 1965, 66. And... Um, it was a satire in the United States government called Apple Pie. And uh, it actually was successful. He went on a TV talk show, and I can't remember which one it was, he told me. But um, the book sold millions of copies, according to him, but it was uh, mysteriously yanked off the shelves. It was, it was censored. And, uh, you know, we say there's no deep state, but that's as, about as un-American as it gets. So I'm not, you know, politics, I don't get into Democrat, Republican, okay, because on the important issues that really affect we the people, they're in lockstep, they're in cahoots, they're collaborating, they're colluding against the best interests of the American people. I'm wholly convinced of that, my friends. Okay, and you wonder how could this be? Well, it be because evil men are willing to do things that decent men are not. You see, this gives them a huge advantage over the right. I mean, these are people that apparently sell their conscience. They don't value the same things. Okay, they don't. I mean, this is, this is in a nutshell, that's why evil men rule the world. And it comes down to free will choice. And this takes us back to our origins. It's very important that we know our origins. And the Jews have their beliefs about the origins. I think a lot of them deny the original sin. And, and the Muslims have their beliefs about, you know, what went wrong. Basically, I, I'm trying to surmise what went wrong. What is wrong with our species? How can this be that we human beings are by far and away atop the intellectual food chain? Everybody, come on. When, when a dolphin... When a porpoise, I don't like to call them dolphins because they get mixed up with that fish that is eaten down in, I, I think it's common down in the south of the border anyhow, the dolphin, a different kind of dolphin. So the porpoise, we all know, is very oh, more intelligent than humans, they say. Well, when the porpoise gets toys on Mars, maybe I'll listen to you. Okay, and the same goes for any other primate or any primates out there. Okay, listen, listen. Everybody knows we're super hyper intelligent beings. Look at all the technology. It came because we have a brain. And that brain came because God gave us a brain. You see, it's the only way everything makes sense. So what went wrong? What went wrong? What 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 is this original sin and the fall of man and the subsequent curse that befell humanity? What is this tree with the containing the fruit? of knowledge and good and evil. And why did God instruct us initially? This is where the story goes. Metaphor, analogy, allegory, it does not matter. Simulation. But understand, in a nutshell, this is the way it played out. And it's the only thing I've ever found to answer the questions I have, to sort things out in my head. And that's why I like to share it. Our origins were miserable okay and we are genetically connected to our ancestors so when i say we and our i'm talking about our ancestors and it's it's in our dna it's it's like that it's like a science forevermore we'll always be humans okay it says in scripture we'll be like the angels in the sense that we will have imperishable bodies bodies that can't be threatened by anything don't get diseases Okay, that's the way the story goes. These are the promises that are held out to the righteous, to the decent people out there that choose life over death. Okay, now we were warned that if we ate from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay, our ancestors, we, that we would on that day surely die. Okay, and we were tricked by this cunning, wily, demonic devilish serpent okay this is this is the way the story goes and i don't know what else can make any sense because we were tricked into eating from this tree partaking of the knowledge of good and evil we rejected what god instructed us and we chose to believe a lie we were tricked we were deceived and when god found out and he asked us he said you because the man was hiding from god he was ashamed. He felt this profound sense of separation, right? Everything was blissful, like I was talking about when we were little kids, right? 
innocent, pure of heart. Nothing, no, no guile within any of us when we were little kids, right? We didn't see it until we saw it, right? And then we realized, oh my God, there's something terribly wrong with this picture. I remember how much the Vietnam War bothered me when I was seven, eight years old. I was living in Santa Cruz, California. And that's where my dad wrote this book, Apple Pie. And he was just, he was pissed off. But it was compounded because it was, he went to the doctor, he was diagnosed with a neurological spinal disease known as multiple sclerosis, MS. And he was told he had five years to live. <laughs> he was on a VA pension. We were probably clearing about 200 bucks a month, but we were still able to be, afford to be homeowners in suburban Santa Cruz. $8,000. I remember that's what the price my parents paid for a house. Okay, it was like only a two-bedroom house. It was nothing fancy. I didn't really get a room of my own, but I was content. You know, kids don't care about being, they just want some sense of security, stability. And I had it. And, uh, but um, in 1966, when I was about eight and a half, our house burned down. And my dad said, screw it. He was pissed off at the system about JFK, about his book being yanked. And, uh, and he intended on moving the family to the Virgin Islands. And we went to St. Thomas. We stopped over in Puerto Rico. Very fun for an eight-year-old boy. The lizards were everywhere. We lived on a cabana on the beach. We stayed on a cabana. Ate these greasy, fat, I don't know what they, jicama? I don't know, deep-fried jicama maybe? Potatoes? I forget. But um, they were delicious. You know, these greasy little wax bags the vendors used to walk around selling. I remember that so much fun it was blissful i mean i just had a blissful childhood it was fun i i always found a way to be happy and find, make friends and have fun and joy just looking around using my senses it was also beautiful you know and in saint thomas i remember the smell of the i think it was the end of the decomposition of maybe like the seashells wind up on the beach you know some of them are stranded you know these sea creatures in the shells and some of them were big these conch shells and stuff it was a trip man i mean back then it was primitive still that's st thomas united states territory and virgin islands but um i remember that smell i think it was at the end of decomposition because it wasn't overpowering or pungent it was just i'll always remember that smell of these seashells that were at their last stages of decomposition on the beach, and it wasn't a particularly unpleasant smell at that point. But it was beautiful. It was cool. I mean, you can imagine as a boy the adventure there. But my dad didn't like it. It was it was predominantly black people, and he well, my dad's not prejudiced at all, but he sensed prejudice, and he didn't want to be around it. So he moved the family to um, England, the southern end of England, to the Isle of Wight specifically the town of Ride, R-Y-D-E, the one the Beatles, they have that song, I get a ticket to Ride, you know, and they're talking about Ride, the, on the uh, Isle of Wight, Wight, not W-H-I-T-E, it's W-I-G-H-T, the Isle of Wight. And it gets into a big, long adventure there because my dad bought a little fixer-upper sailboat. I went to school in, in England in, in the Isle of Wight in ride and um, a lot of adventures from there I don't want to go into because I was first trying to establish you know that we know two things from a very young age one that there's this sense of well-being and bliss that's very beautiful that we all can tap into at any time and that really is God our parents the father male female they create us. first chapter of the Bible establishes the nature of God so it's in all of us. We have this spark of divinity. It was granted to us, gifted, eternal life. And what God wants is not to have eternal life and go to a worse place from here. He wants us to go to a better place. That's very clear to me from just paying attention. Okay, but what went wrong? You see, God was pissed off when we, we did this thing. And he asked the man, why are you hiding? And then he asked him, who told you you were naked? You see, we were oblivious. We were innocent. We were just like all the other creatures.